Hi you guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another HKHY video. So if you did not know, I have a very healthy lifestyle way of eating because I have to. The eating lifestyle that I lead is called paleo. So I am on the paleo diet for my lifetime. I cannot eat rice, I can't eat dairy, and I cannot eat gluten. But other than that, I'm not allergic to anything. Before I found these allergies, I would eat anything and everything, and I am just the biggest food connoisseur. It is so hard now with my restrictions but thankfully I live in LA currently where there are so many different options along with stores and restaurants getting in with the hip times and giving us different dairy-free gluten-free grain-free paleo type of foods you can't always go out and spend that money so I am here to teach you some of the concoctions I have made I have spent so much time in my kitchen and found a love for cooking making up recipes finding recipes online through fellow paleo lifestylers <laughs> when you eat healthier naturally you start to lose weight you start to gain more energy you start to gain more positivity in your life gluten consumption and dairy consumption is actually a really big part of a lot of the diseases cancers all of that out there that is why I decided to create a subsection on my channel and a side character of me called the recipe holder so that is my intro for a healthy kitchen healthy you let's get to this video today I have two very yummy and pretty easy butternut squash recipes for you guys this is going to be the first fall recipe a part of HKHY and I'm super excited Excited to share these with you guys so first up we have a butternut squash soup let's talk about what we're gonna need for this creamy beautiful orange soup you're obviously going to need some squash it would help if you had about six cups of chopped squash or you could just get a small medium ish squash and that makes about six cups when diced and along with the squash you are going to need two shallots then you are going to need one can of light coconut milk some coconut oil minced garlic, some vegetable broth, and some maple syrup. Last but not least, we will need some salt and pepper, some curry powder, and cinnamon. Okay, first things first, we want to prep. So that means you wanna dice your squash and you want to slice your shallots thinly. Let's talk about how to cut a squash if you have not done this before. First thing you need to do is cut the top and the bottom off. Then you want to somehow peel the rough skin of the butternut squash off. At first I was using a peeler, which kind of hurts the knuckle after a while because I was repeatedly hitting my hand on my cutting board or you could use a really sharp knife to just get those off either way I'm really bad with knives so I'm struggling in this video and I pretty much always am when cutting huge things like this if you have even an easier way to do so let me know share it with me Follow my Instagram so I can see it. After you peel, you're gonna cut your squash in the middle. Then you're gonna cut those two pieces in the middle as well. And one of those pieces are going to have the seeds in them in which you are going to then grab a spoon, seed your squash. From there, cut some rings out of your fourths and then cut some squares out of all of your rings. And voila, you have diced your squash. Step two, you want to heat a large pot over medium heat. You're gonna add your oil, your shallots, and your garlic, and then you're gonna saute those for about two minutes. Step three, you're going to add your squash and every seasoning that I listed into your pot. Step four, you're going to stir that all around to coat everything, and then you are going to cover your pot and leave it to cook for about four minutes. Step five, we're gonna add our milk, we're gonna add our broth, our syrup, and then we're gonna bring the pot to a low boil on medium heat. If you don't really know what a low boil means, just keep it on medium heat and you have to wait don't push the heat up, you just have to wait till it starts boiling, which is called a low boil because normally when you want to boil things, you put it on high. Step six, once your soup is boiling, we are going to reduce the heat to low 
Cover it back up and allow it to simmer for about 15 minutes. Step seven, you are going to transfer your soup to a blender. I have the blender that has the like personalized cups, so I had to transfer it in a couple different ways. Definitely be careful because the soup is obviously hot, but you are simply going to blend, blend, blend until it turns into a soup and it is super creamy. And then you are going to throw all of that soup back into the pot for step eight, which is to continue to cook it for just a couple more minutes on medium heat. That's it, super easy. It's such a yummy soup and it gives you just such good fall vibes inside. I was in heaven when I had my bowl and Justin of course liked it too. If you are not good with spice, I would say to cut the curry powder measurement I give you in half because curry can get spicy, but if you are okay with spice, it adds such a beautiful flavor. Depending on how big your party is for eating. You may or may not have leftovers and just to let you know, leftovers will be great in the fridge for about three to four days. After that, throw it out, make a new one. Okay, let's get to the second recipe of this video, which is going to be butternut squash quinoa chili. So good and this chili is so filling. The best part of this recipe is we are only going to be using one single pot the whole time. So we're obviously going to need a squash again. This time you want to get a squash that would equal about four cups of diced butternut squash. Then we are going to need some coconut oil, veggie broth, some quinoa, and some maple syrup. Next you'll need a white or yellow onion, a jalapeno, minced garlic, and chopped kale. Last Lastly, we will need some kidney beans and black bean, fire roasted diced tomatoes, tomato paste, or ketchup if you don't or can't find tomato paste. I've done this a couple of times. I completely forgot to buy tomato paste to show you guys this recipe, so I just use ketchup. It works the same, but tomato paste is better if you can remember to put it on your grocery list. Then head over to your seasoning cabinet and grab some salt and pepper, some chili powder, cumin, and paprika. All right, I know that is a long and ingredient list for this beautiful chili but it's so easy you're basically just adding different things in in different steps and leaving it alone let's start step one prep you want to dice your onion slice and seed your jalapeno especially if you are not one that is with the spice you want to make sure that there's not too many seeds in your chili step two you want to heat a big pot over medium heat and once it is hot you want to add your oil your onion and your jalapeno step three Three, you are going to season those items with salt and pepper and then saute them for three to four minutes. Step four, you want to add your garlic and then saute that for two to three more minutes. Step five, we are adding all of our squash with two tablespoons of the chili powder, one tablespoon of the cumin, and all of the paprika. You're gonna stir all of that together to coat it and then cook that for three more minutes. Step six, we are adding our tomatoes, our tomato paste or ketchup, and our broth. We are going to stir it all together and then bring the pot to a low boil on medium heat. Step seven, once your pot is boiling, now you are going to add your quinoa. Then you're going to reduce the heat to low. You're gonna cover it and you're gonna cook for about 15 minutes. You can completely leave the pot alone. If however you do start to notice that your chili is looking dry, you can add some more water or some veggie broth. I don't ever really have to do this, but sometimes your vegetables and whatnot in a soup or a chili will absorb your liquids. So just keep an eye out for that. But other than that you can just let it sit for 15 minutes. Step eight, we are going to add all the beans and then we are going to add a fourth teaspoon of salt and pepper and the remaining cumin, chili powder, and syrup which should all be one tablespoon of each. Step nine, we are going to bring our chili to a simmer over medium heat. Then you want to reduce the heat to low and then let it simmer again for 15 to 20 more minutes. Step 10, you want to make sure that you taste and adjust your chili with any seasonings. If it needs more salt, if it needs more pepper, if it needs some lorries, that's what I do. I added a bunch of lorries into mine and that always seems to happen. But that brought it from a 10 to 11. So make sure you taste and adjust. The last step is to then add your kale in if you want to. If you want to just add a bunch more vitamins in there and some more healthiness and you don't mind kale. You're gonna put those grains in there, cover your chili, and then let that sit for two to three more minutes. Your chili is done. You can serve your chili with some avocado, 
with crackers, with cornbread, with some lime juice squeezed on top. Those are all amazing contenders. And I guarantee you with this chili, unless you are making it for like a family of five, you are going to have leftovers. So you can have this chili in the fridge and it will be good for five days. I love this chili. I ate it straight for five days. Girl, it's so yummy. It's one of those things where it's like you come back from work and like you know you're about to eat your leftovers and it makes you happy. It's one of those. Let me know down below what you guys eat your chili with because I feel like a lot of people eat it with different things. My go-to used to be corn chips and jalapenos so I would always put a bunch more jalapenos on top of my chili, any chili, and I would grab some corn tortilla chips. Let me know what you guys use. So that is it for this video. I shared with you guys a curried butternut squash soup and a butternut squash quinoa chili which are both so yummy. Please tag me if you guys try this, send me photos. So make sure you are following my Instagrams, the Destiny Holder and the Recipe Holder. Also just so that you don't miss out on any updates or really anything, any part of my life that you don't get to see here on YouTube. Make sure you guys are subscribed and that your notification bell is on so that you don't miss my next recipe video and my next Halloween look. It is October, so I don't know if you know, you should. I'm giving you guys different Halloween looks every single Wednesday, so you don't wanna miss that. Make sure your notification bell is on and send my channel to someone else who really loves Halloween. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you guys enjoyed these recipes. I will see you guys next time. Bye.